In the dark of night, a dead general is prepared for burial. As the doctors embalm the body, they also take one additional liberty. They briefly encase the general's face in wet plaster. Only minutes later, they have created a macabre and vivid testimony to the life and death of one of Mexico's most arresting characters. It's the death mask of Pancho Villa, bandit hero, murderer, and revolutionary. As part of the revolutionary uprising that overthrew Mexico's dictator Porfirio Diaz, Pancho Villa established himself as a brave and charismatic leader. This is a hero of the revolution. Uh, this had, Pancho Villa was responsible for a lot of civil liberties. Um, he established schools for children. Um, he was looking for equality in terms of society and economics. He basically sacrificed his life for the revolution. On July 20th, 1923, Villa was driving in an open car near his ranch when a band of assassins ambushed him with a blizzard of bullets. He received one bullet to the forehead, about 13 to the upper torso, and then he slumped over. That night, an ancient ritual of death was performed that goes all the way back to ancient times. They made a death mask on the face of the dead bandit general. It's an old tradition. In order to document your existence, they would cover your face with olive oil and then take a cast in plaster and then later on cast that in bronze. The doctors spread 15 or 20 pounds of wet plaster on the corpse's face. When it dried, they were left with a vivid and gruesome artifact of Villa's passing. But the final step of this process, casting the face in a bronze sculpture, was not completed. The death mask was given to a young Mexican lieutenant, who in turn gave it to an American living in Chihuahua who was a financial backer of Villa, and his name was Otto Norwald. The officer simply said, a present from General Pancho Villa, left a package and disappeared into the night. When Nordwald unwrapped the parcel, he discovered the death mask. Nordwald kept the mask in his garage for almost 10 years. Then he took it over the border to El Paso, Texas, and entrusted it to the care of an eccentric educator named Dr. Lucinda de Leftwich Templin. Templin ran the Radford School for Girls in El Paso, and glass cases around the school prominently displayed her artifact collection. At first, she hid the mask in her lingerie drawer. But finally, she took it out, carefully inventoried it as number 1137, and put it on display outside her office. After her death, the collections kind of dispersed. There wasn't a lot of good management, and it was put away and kind of forgotten. The mask was tucked away in a storage vault and mostly forgotten. Until 1978, when a young artist named Steve Beck came to work at the Radford School. I ran across a cardboard box which actually looked like a paper bag and looked inside and here's the death mask. I knew it was a death mask but I didn't know whose it was and contacted some of the alum who said, oh yes, that's the death mask of Pancho Villa. Beck was fascinated by the mask and got permission from the school's director to make a series of ceramic and wax impressions of Pancho Villa's face. Then he cast a final bronze version of the Villa death mask from his own copies. At last, the process, begun 60 years before, was complete. But the mask's story was far from complete. In the intervening years, the charismatic, mysterious Villa had been enshrined as a revolutionary hero. And this relic was now considered a Mexican national treasure. Word had spread that the mask had been uncovered, and requests began to arrive at the school that the mask be returned to its nation of origin. The daughter of Otto Norwald had attended Radford School, and she knew that it was in the collections, and it was her wish that it be returned to Chihuahua. Um, and she went to the school and talked to them, and they did not agree with her. Finally, in 1983, 
course, the school gave in and agreed to give the mask back to Mexico. In an elaborate ceremony, the mask was presented to the governor of the city of Chihuahua. There's definitely a mystique about the mask. There is a presence about it when you handle it. His wife actually put it to her face and started talking to it and talking to her husband and how she missed him. Villa remains as controversial as ever, both hero and villain to millions. But whoever the man himself may have been, his image has become immortal. In a mask that became, in the end, as mystical and controversial as the man himself. Pancho Villa's death mask is in the archives of the Museum of the Revolution in Chihuahua, Mexico. It is not available for public viewing. <laughs>